darkest won't last very long Do you believe that? And I got a feeling the darkness won't last very long Oh 
believe in this place that's people that need healing. This place that's people that's waiting for a miracle. So if you are one of these people, just raise your hands. And if you are beside of one of those, just stretch your hands and pray together. This is a house of worship. And the Holy Spirit is moving right now and He's going to touch you. So raise your voice. Raise your voice.
We're going to declare His faithfulness. He's a holy God. He's a good God. He's a good Father. Amen. Amen. What comes to my mind every time we sing holy is that verse in Revelation chapter 4. It says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. Amen. There's such a sense of faith in the room. I don't know if you can feel it. But it's just feel like we are stepping into a new season as a church and as a college. And we just have Mission Sunday and Pastor Phil just stirred our hearts saying that he's believing for a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. And I have faith for that. I know you have faith for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to chapel. It's good to see you. You're looking very good. Um, fuego, vamos to all the Spanish speakers. Yeah, um, I'm one of you guys. I know you, you can't tell because of my Aussie accent, but um, definitely a Latino. <laughs> but we, we're going to pray. Um, we have people praying for different things right now. There's someone who is praying for supernatural healing. And I believe that God is a healer. We have someone believing for God to bring job, um, job and finances and provision. We have someone praying for insomnia. And... I believe that God can turn situations around. Amen. And I believe that God is here leaning in and he's waiting for us as well to respond in faith. And I want to pray for this prayer request. And I also want us to prophesy over this semester, over this year, to declare God's goodness, to declare God's harvest and faith and the spirit to be present in every place that we find ourselves because you carry God's presence. You know, I believe that your hands will be used to bring healing in Jesus' name. You know, what's special about your hands? There's nothing special about them. What's special is God. You know, God in you. So why don't you stretch your hands and pray with, with me. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for every single person in this room. Father, we pray, Father, that you bring healing, Lord, to people's situation. Father, we pray that you bring provision, Lord, for those who are feeling like they're lacking, Lord. We declare that you are our shepherd, Lord, and we lack nothing. Father, we believe in and we prophesy, Lord, over this year, over this semester, Lord. We declare it's going to be a year full of your spirit, Lord, full of harvest, Lord, full of a move of God. Father, I pray that you give us faith and boldness, Lord. Father, we push back, Lord, the work of the enemy, Lord. Everything about the enemy is under our feet, Lord, and we take authority in Jesus' name, Lord. Believe in for signs and wonders, Lord. Believe in for miracles, Lord, for dry bones to come back to life in Jesus' name. Come on, college. Father, we believe in for a move of God, Lord. We believe in that you are in our midst, Lord. We believe, Father, that you are gonna make a way where there seems to be no way, Father. If there's any giants that we are facing, Lord, may you go, Lord, with us, Father. May you give us faith and bonus. May we continue to declare your goodness, Lord. Father, may we continue to worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's sing it one, one more time. full of faith yeah. amen yes we are I have a few praise reports that I know is gonna put more faith in you and we have someone here praising God he says last week after chapel I received my visa it's good eh and it says here we got next two years love heart happy face love heart I, I, I love that <laughs> We have someone else thanking God because God is good and I'm still here. Someone else praising God for coffee. I definitely praise God for coffee every morning. Someone else is praising God because Neo got engaged. Oh. Well, you want to tell us quickly how, how was the engagement? Where was it? Was on the um, 
bitch. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. It was in the mountains and yeah, it's incredible. Just keen to run a good race with the Lord together. Amen. 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 Very good. I, um, I believe in short engagement, so I hope the wedding is soon. Um, just voice of wisdom. But why don't you, <laughs> why don't you, take, um, why don't you go back to your seats and um, we're going to continue with our chapel. And right now, is, once you're making your way to your seat, we have one of our amazing third-year students. He's a man of faith. He's a man who is full of the Holy Spirit. So why don't you welcome Eddie to the stage as he brings the word. How are we, college? Everyone's hype, full of faith in this room always. Like I said, my name's Eddie. I'm one of our third year students here. Uh, <laughs> shout out to all our first years. It's so good to see so many Aussies here. We're coming back, baby. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. That's it, come on. Hey, college, oh, you may take your seats, by the way. I've got a question for you guys. Are you guys spiritually fit? Do you have spiritual biceps? Are you training your flesh or are you training your spirit? Like Lee, man of God, obviously trains in the spirit. Not too sure about his flesh, mate, but I can help you out after. I've got something for you. It's not illegal either, mate, so come talk to me after. But hey, um, let's get straight into it. Eh? We're going to 1 Timothy 4, um, verse 7 and 8. But this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. Timothy's at the church in Ephesus. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Immoral behavior, people idolizing money before God, care more about their appearance than um, the things of God. But let's get into it. Verse 7, have nothing to do with godliness myths or old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness is of value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Verse 12, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. And I have faith for a college that's no longer going to care about the fleshly things. That's no longer care about what they look like, how many people like them, idolizing their, their money and their visas over the presence of God, caring about the things um, of the flesh rather than the spirit. But I have faith for a college that is going to be set apart and an example for believers in faith, their love, the, the way that they love each other, the way they act, the way they speak and the purity of their hearts. My mum used to say to me, be careful what you think because it becomes your words. Be careful what you say because it becomes what you do. Be careful what you do because it becomes your character. And be careful what your character is because it becomes your destiny. And I truly believe this all starts with having a solid mind on the things of God and the Word of God. Allowing the Word of God to come in and flush out the lies. To be set free by the truth that is the Word of God. It says we purify our hearts by being obedient to the Word of God. It says we build faith by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So what are you believing? Are you believing the lies or are you believing the Word of God? Are you believing the lies or are you believing the promises that God's spoken over your life? The words that people have spoken over you to get you to this point. Allowing the Word of God to transform your mind. Like Lee spoke about Joshua. Um, he was being strong and courageous and took hold of the promised land and the promises that God had already given. Jesus has to pave the way for you guys to get here. Jesus is the one way you guys are here. So let's be a college and I have faith for a college that is going to be spiritually jacked with spiritual biceps in the mind on the Word of God, working out in the things of God. Come on. Oh, very good. Let's think, Eddie. Well done. Well done. A spiritually jacked. To be full of faith. That was a, such a great message, Eddie. Very well done. You can tell you prepare and you brought a word of faith. So thank you for that. It was a good challenge. Who likes a good challenge? I, I do. I do. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. Well, we um, will continue with the speaker for today. And let me tell you about this woman of God. She's a woman of faith. What I love about Angela is that she's been faithfully serving our house for many, many years. Not in that way, but yes. And then um, she's been here for a long time. 
have a lot of experience, but every time you encounter Angela, she's still full of faith. She still has faith to believe for the impossible. She still has faith to believe for healings. She still has faith to believe for signs and wonders. And that's a person I want to be like. So why don't you welcome Angela to the stage? Oh, come on, college, are you jacked today? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you. Well, he stole my title. Eddie stole my title. Spiritually Jacked is my title today, and um, it's going to be great. Are you ready today? Because I actually have faith that God is going to deposit supernatural faith for things that are seemingly impossible, and um, I believe that he's going to do it today in this time. So if you have a huge need, something that looks impossible, well, you're in the right chapel. All right, so I'm going to pray, have a seat, that we're going to go for it. Father, thank you for this chapel. Thank you for this beautiful moment where you are going to meet with us. You are a God of the impossible. And this is a house of miracles because it's your house. And you're a miracle-working God. And so, Father, I pray today that as wisdom and scripture and ideas and thoughts from your word drop into hearts and minds, I pray change will take place. In Jesus' name, have a seat. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I am so grateful that our senior pastors talked about, well, Lucinda really declared, I have faith for this. And when she said that, I was like, wow, what a bold statement. And I loved it. But then I went, we need to outwork how, because I'm a how person. Any how people, any how people like, yes, and how. Yes, I want that, and how do I do that? Is it a feeling? Is it something that is, um, I can just decide? How do we work this out? So today we're going to give some practicals to you. And Lee launched us. When he launched us in chapels, he launched us by talking about, I have faith for this. And he declared some things that we have faith for this semester. Things like growing in devotion. Are we growing in devotion? Yes, we are. Growing in leadership. We're going to give you lots of opportunities. Growing in God encounters. And I'm believing that people are going to have that today. Growing in the gifts of the Spirit. And of course, we do that by walking in love as well. And so today, my title is Spiritually Jacked. No, it's actually, we need faith for this. We need faith for this. All right. So many people will say that faith is belief obey, trust. And it's great. I think it's true. But I like to say that faith is simply acting on a promise. Acting on a promise. But you will only act on a promise if the one who promised is reliable and trustworthy. You won't act on something that somebody has promised if they are untrustworthy, right? You'll only step out. You'll only actually act or activate the promise if you believe the one who promised. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, For no, ma- no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Anybody feeling the fuego in the room today? Ooh, it's nice and warm up here. Okay, the reason I can say I have faith for this, and I am saying I have faith for this, is because I have faith in the one who is able and willing to do it. God is not a God that you have to put his arm up his back, talk him into it, be perfect, say all the right things, know all the right people, and then he may do what you have asked. Actually, God is waiting on the edge of his seat to do the impossible for you. He loves to do the impossible college. He actually thrives on it. And I love that Jesus, after cursing the fig tree, in Mark. He curses the fig tree. He goes into Jerusalem. He throws over some tables, preaches a little bit. And then Mark eleven twenty, 20, it says, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Do you remember this story? Now, Peter, the loud mouth of the group, he's me, he's the question asker. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, what you cursed has withered. And the first words Jesus says to him are, have faith in God. He doesn't say, have faith in yourself. 
Have confidence in how spiritual you are. He says, have faith in God. College, we can have faith for this, whatever it might be this semester, because we have faith in an almighty God. That's why we can have faith for this. We can have faith for this. God in his very nature is a promise giver and a promise keeper. Numbers 23, 19, it's in the message. It says, God is not a man, one given to lies, and not a son of man changing his mind. Listen to these two sentences. Does he speak and not do what he says? Does he promise and not come through? Maybe you have been in a situation that seems impossible and God hasn't come through yet. Let me just tell you, after serving God for over 50 years, yes, I know, he did, Yvonne did say long time. I've been here a long time. I've been a Christian a long time. I grew up in church. But you know what? I, that's good. I actually love it. The older I get, the more fiery I get because the more I know my God. And here's the thing. After serving God over 50 years, he has never failed me. He has never failed me. There are times where I thought he failed me, but time has proven that he has never failed me. So hang on to the promises, college. Hang on to the promises. Three things about faith. These are three things that you need to remember when it comes to having faith for this. Number one, faith is is in the unseen. Faith is in the unseen. It's probably my least favorite part about faith. (laughs) Okay, but it's also the most exciting because when things look look the darkest, you can have faith that God is working in the unseen. It takes a remarkable faith to go, God, I know you're working. Even though I don't see it, I know you're moving. Even though I don't feel it, I know you're moving. Faith isn't needed if we see what we're believing for college. If you can see that there's a way to have it happen, it doesn't take your faith. That's just having a brain. But if you actually are believing for the supernatural, you're going to need to be a person of faith. You're going to need to be a person that calls those things that be not as though they are. What are you needing to call into the scene? Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by faith and not by sight. We're not meant to live by what we see. We're meant to live by what God has promised us in his word. There are certain things that he has promised us. We're going to talk about those in just a moment. So we're not going to wait to feel full of faith before we start believing and trusting him. We're going to believe now. Don't let what we see in the present affect what we are believing God for. That's living at a very base level humanity. Romans 4, and I'm going to say this, it is my favorite faith scripture. All right, Romans 4.18 in the message, talking about Abraham, the father of our faith. It says this, against all odds, when it looked hopeless. And I just want to speak to people who are seeing things right now that look hopeless. It could be a visa, it could be finances, it could be a job, it could be fees, it could be something even more like a family member who's unsaved and everything about it looks hopeless. But it says against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed the promise and expected God to fulfill it. He took God at his word, college. And as a result, he became the father of many nations. God's declaration over him came to pass. No surprise to me. No surprise to me that it happened for Abraham because he believed the promise of God and he acted in faith and he stood his ground. And we can do the same thing. So is there something or someone right now that you're believing for in your life that looks hopeless? Well, good. That's exactly what it takes in order for faith to work. Hebrews 10.23 says, let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. Firm grip. He always keeps his word, college. He always keeps his word. It might take a little bit of time, but we've got time because God is on the throne. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing. Thanks, Eddie. He's taking my scriptures as well. Faith comes by hearing, not seeing. It doesn't say faith comes by seeing. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of God. 
Most likely, what you are believing for looks opposite to the way you see it. Most likely, most likely, what you're believing for looks opposite. And it is scary to stand in faith when things look opposite than what you're believing God for. Believe anyway. Believe anyway. Stand up and go, I'm going to be like the greats in the body of Christ, and I'm going to stand against the things that look opposite to what I'm believing for. Number two, faith makes ordinary people extraordinary. I love it. Extraordinary because you chose to trust God at his word. We seem to think only perfect people or the most spiritual or whatever uh, tend to get the miracles. They know the right people. They quote the, you know, whatever, this theologian. But actually, we look at ourselves and we think, well, I'm average. I'm normal. I come from a normal home, a normal city, an average place. But you know what? Average, normal people in the Bible did extraordinary things. They did remarkable things because they, did, they weren't remarkable. They served a remarkable God. And I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged by that because I serve that same God. And it said, listen, Moses led God's people out of bondage and slavery, but he was full of insecurity. If you read Exodus, you'll realize this man was not perfect. Peter was one of the people who helped build an, the early church, but yet he was impulsive. He was a fisherman and he denied Jesus. Zacchaeus was a tax collecting sinner who cheated his own people, yet he became a generous disciple of Jesus Christ. David was a shepherd who defeated Goliath. That's amazing. That's amazing. He saved his country from being slaves to the Philistine army and became a great king. Miriam, she was the big sister who protected her baby brother Moses by going against the law of the land. And he ended up saving God's people and herself out of bondage. And in Acts 4, 13, it says these powerful and practical words. It says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, ordinary men, they were astonished and recognized that they had been with Jesus. Let's not disqualify ourselves because we don't see ourselves as giants in the faith. We don't see ourselves as being able to move the mountains. We don't always see ourselves the way God sees us. But here's the beautiful thing. Listen, it says that when we look at this story about these ordinary men, they were ordinary people who had visual boldness on their lives because they had been with Jesus. They weren't amazing in themselves. They were amazing in Christ. You have the same faith as the people in the Bible. I used to think, well, they had a different brand of faith than I've got today. Like somehow they had something I don't have access to. But actually, I love this. While I was prepping this message, I felt the Holy Spirit say, it's the same faith. And I looked at this scripture in 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, it is written, talking to the early church, I believe, therefore I have spoken, since we have that same spirit of faith. We also believe and therefore speak. It keeps going. But here's the thing. We have the same spirit of faith because we have the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. He is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So if you have the spirit of God living in you, you have the same spirit the early church had. And here's the thing. We disqualify us, but God says, I've qualified you in Christ. We have everything we need in Christ. So powerful. We can say, I have faith for this because we have the same spirit of faith. All right, number three, and my last point, and I've got some thoughts here. Number three, faith takes resolve. It's going to take resolve. You're going to have to decide, I choose faith. I choose trusting God. I choose what I don't see because I choose a God I cannot see. I choose faith because you will have to make a decision. Am I going to trust my own understanding or am I going to trust God? Am I going to trust what I see or am I going to trust the God of the unseen? You know what? We have to make decisions and we need to have Resolve College. I don't know if you know this saying, but it goes, good things come to those who 
wait. I did ask Danny this morning, and she didn't hear it, but she's also not an English speaker by her first language. So I didn't know if you knew that saying. Good things come to those who wait. That's the saying. Good things come to those who wait. But I actually believe we don't, if we don't quit, we win. If you just decide, I'm going to put my feet firmly into the soil of Christ and I will not be moved, I will not quit, you will win. Hebrews 6, 11 and 12 says, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end. This same diligence to the very end. In order to make your hope sure, Then you will not be sluggish, but will imitate those who through faith and our favorite word, patience, inherit what has been promised. Here's the thing. There has been promises spoken to us. There has been. There is. There is written promises that are for us. And through faith and patience, we inherit what has been promised us. So what we believe for usually will take time. It'll take faith, and it will take patience. You need your faith. You need your faith. And your community needs your faith. We need your faith. Actually, God needs you to have faith. He needs you to trust him. That's all he needs from you, really. He is willing and able to do everything if you will have faith. We naturally want to talk about the problem. Any friends in the room? I do. Oh, nobody likes to talk about the problem. I'm telling you, you're lying because we love to talk about the problem. We love to talk about the problem, but we need to speak God's promise over the problem. I love it. There's an old saying, but I'm going to reword it. It says, don't talk to God about how big your problem is. Talk to your problem about how big your God is. The old saying is, don't, uh, it's don't talk to God about your mountain, talk to the mountain about how big your God is. But if faith is acting on a promise, do you know your promises? That's why we say, get the word of God in you. I love how the Holy Spirit will whisper scripture to me because that's what he does. But I, if I hadn't put the word of God in my spirit, there's nothing for him to whisper to me. He brings back to my remembrance what I have studied, what have I been learning and growing in. So get to know your scripture because I'm going to share some promises with you today. I'm going to spoon feed you some promises. All right. So is there anyone in the room that needs healing for yourself or for someone else? Here is your promises. Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die. I have, I've actually sh- shouted this before. I shall not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Psalm 41, 3, the Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. Claim it. It's your promise from God. All right. Do you need provision, college? All right. Here is your promise, Philippians 4, 19. And my God, I have actually opened my Bible to Philippians 4, showed God this scripture. I said, I did it. Write this, God. You wrote it. And he said, and my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 34, 10, the young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good Thing. And then we've got Psalm 37, 25. It's a good classic. I was young. I was once. I was young and now I'm old. Er, okay, I'm putting that in. Old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. Do you know what? My children are blessed because we have lived a godly life. You are making a difference for the generations. You can declare that over your children, but you can declare this over your life, that God will never cause you to beg bread. Fearful. Have you been fearful? Don't raise your hand. If you've been fearful, here's your promise. And I've used this one as well. I've probably used all of these. All right. And you will probably have to use all of these in your lifetime. I'm going to ask the team to come up. We're going to sing and we're going to declare some of these promises over our specific situations today. If you've been fearful or anxious or afraid of things, in 2 Timothy 1.7 it says, For God has not given us, you and I, a spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind. 
Proverbs 28, one, the wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous, that's you and I, the righteousness of God in Christ, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We have nothing to fear, college. If you're grieving or in pain about something, here's your promise, 1 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles. Are you allowing him to comfort you in your troubles? You know, when somebody put in that prayer request that they're having insomnia, I straight away thought of a promise for you. He said, he will give his beloved rest. That is your promise, college. If you've dealt with failure, and you know what? There has been failures that happen in life, right? If you're dealing with a failure in your life or a seeming failure, Philippians 1.6 says these beautiful and powerful words. This is your promise. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I'd like you to stand up. I'd like you to stand up and I want you to think about one promise that you need to hold on to. You need to grip it. You need that resolve. You need that passion. You need that Faith, you need to say, I have faith for this. Why? Not based on your feeling, not based on what you see, but based on the promises of a living God who is saying, would you trust me with that? Would you trust me? Would you actually hold on to these promises? And you know what? I believe that when you hold on to the promises, you declare them and you say, I will not move. I will not let the winds move me. I will not what I... what." I will not let what I see move me. I'm going to stand firm. You watch how God parts your Red Sea. He he loves to show himself powerful on your behalf. But you know what? He gets such pleasure when you trust him at his word. He's actually waiting for you to hold fast on his promises. And not waiting for things just to happen because they happen. But go, God, I'm trusting you. You are reliable, God. You will never fail me in this situation. I know you're working, even though I can't see it, even though I can't feel it. I trust you in Jesus' name. All right, team, you're gonna lead us and you are gonna hold fast on your promise and you're gonna declare it throughout this worship in just a moment and then we'll come back up.
feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Amen. I wonder if there's anyone here who you just need strength from God, that you just need faith for the journey. If that's you, why don't you raise your hands to heaven? I believe an anointing of faith is in the room. Father, receive your faith and your strength in Jesus' name, Father. I pray that you give them faith, Lord, for what's ahead this semester, Lord, and this year, Lord. I pray that you renew the strength, Lord, in this season. Father, I pray that we'll go from glory to glory, Lord, from strength to strength, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, not by mind, not by power, but by your Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Why don't we really thank Angela for that amazing word? I feel, I feel like today we got like a faith injection, you know? I feel like we, it was the whole service, we were just getting faith for the journey and amen, in Jesus' name. I really encourage you to take your faith to tutorials, take your faith to your workplaces, because who knows what God has store. You know, I pray that you will be the man and the woman of God who, when you find yourself in, in your workplace, you know, and someone's struggling with healing or whatever they're facing, that you respond to the calling with faith. And like, hey, can I pray for you? And you lay your hands and watch what God's gonna do. Amen, amen. Well, a few announcements before we go. This coming Sunday, we got Mission Sunday Part 2, which I love. Part 2 was amazing. Part 2 is going to be even better in Jesus' name. And that's where every uh, campus pastor will outline the vision that they have for the campus. So wherever you find yourself serving, really pay attention this Sunday to see what's on your pastor heart. You know, to see what God has put on their heart and think about how you can serve and help them you know, fulfilling the vision that you have for the Hills Campus, the City Campus, the Inner West, Maryland, Greater West, Northern Beaches, <laughs> amen, and all the campus that I forgot online or wherever you find yourself. And we also have some amazing uh, merch that we are selling in the foyer. I asked them to give me a jumper, but it, I think it doesn't fit my size, so um, I'm a big boy. Anyways, you, you'll find them. <laughs> You'll find it on the foyer, the merch, and I believe the prices hopefully come up on the screen. But I will really encourage you, you know, to, oh, there you go, that's, that's a very good price. Um, and just carry your hoodie, carry your shirt, whatever you go, be proud of the college that you are part of. Amen? All right, let me pray for you and then we can go for lunch. Father, thank you for your people, Lord. Thank you for every person in this room. I pray that you will be with us in our lunch, Lord, in our tutorials, in our classes, Father. May your presence, Lord, continue to strengthen us. May we continue to go from strength to strength. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. All right, have a blessed day. See you around. <laughs>